Okay. So we'll do a little bit more editing again. Um, that's so I've just shown you the bungalow style um, veranda overhang out the front here for a, a porch underneath the main hip. Um, we'll just now imagine there's another veranda running along this wall through here, but I'm going to treat it differently. I'm going to let this roof slope down to the edge of that veranda. Um, and, uh, and still be pitched from the same height. So in other words, unchange the walls, the wall height supporting this roof and just leave the roof pitch further out. So we'll just do it. Once again, we could do this from a, a plan view or we can do it just from the 3D view. It works just the same. So if I change this wall, what I'll do is I'll just break this connection here. I'll just bring that back a little bit so that connection is broken. I'll bring that one back too, so that connection is broken there. And instead of having a 600 overhang at that point, I might go for a 1.8 metre wide veranda running across there. But still, it was being pitched off that wall. That's how that was created. So uh, I can't just trim this. If I trim that to that now, I've extended the wall shape out too far there. So what I'll do is I'll just go and grab a line Make sure I'm not defining the slope, and I'll just draw a line from the end of where that roof was and go straight out at 90 degrees and trim that off. So I've added that shape to it. So the wall is still pitching, and I think if I've done everything right, it'll still be pitching from this wall here, and it'll just be extending down further. Okay, so not too sure of what effect that would have if I trimmed that. Um, I'll just try that. I can always click the tick and see what effect we've got there. Yes, okay, I thought it would do something like that. Okay, so what I've done, I'm, I'm almost there. Well, maybe that's the, maybe that is one solution that you wanted. So you could extend it out like that. This veranda is extending out, and imagine if these are three meter high walls, then there's probably still a reasonable height over here, and we could just even check that out on our west elevation view. Uh, this point here, I'll just grab a tape measure, and we'll just measure from that point down, and I've still got more than 2.2 meters, so that would be fine at that veranda point there. So. It's not quite the effect that I wanted in this valley um, corner through here. So what I really wanted is I wanted that wall, that roof extending through to this roof. So we'll show you what we'll do there. We'll edit that footprint and I'll break this connection back here again through there. Um, I needed this line to come back to where it would have come so I'll just go to a top-down view so where it was coming to before I'll just use this as a construction line it was coming from there at 45 degrees so I can just trim that off like that and get rid of that so I do that is where the valley um, would come in, the valley gutter would come into that point as what it was doing there before I moved this line. So what I've got to do is I've got to bring this up very close. I can't bring it right onto it though and leave that line coming past. The sketch mode has got to finish in one continuous loop of unbroken chain lines. So I'll just go and grab another line and bring that up here to yep, so it lines up and then across. And as long as I leave some tiny gap there, just change this temporary dimension line, anything very small, I'll try one millimeter even, should still work. So there is still a small one millimeter gap there. When I click the tick there, yes, good, that worked. And that thing gave me the effect that I wanted on that roof with that veranda plate overhanging to that point through there. Um, it doesn't extend into the wall. Uh, so to do that, you'd have to place another separate little piece of roof on there if you wanted that roof to extend into the wall. Um, because you can't, if I go back into the edit mode, 
you can't overlap the lines so they, can't, they won't be able to extend in through there you'd have to build an extra little piece of roof to cope with that but um, there's that roof shape done so what we'll do now is we'll have a look at what happens when you truncate little corners different effects of truncating corners through here so I'll edit this footprint once again and I'll just grab uh, a line and truncate a corner at say 45 degrees across here get that happening at 45 degrees and if I trim that line off and that line off um, now I might make this if I show you what this one looks like if I define the slope so this one defines a slope and I'll set the slope to the same as the rest of the roof at 25 degrees so we've just truncated that corner there at 25 degrees and click the tick and that's what we've created there okay now the reason why we've now got this eaves line up here set to the underside of that roof will be level with the roof the wall height okay as the underside of that eaves line there is level with the top of the walls because that's how I created that line when I was in sketch mode I just drew it as a line at that roof level so once again if I really wanted to well that might be the effect you're after but if you wanted those eaves lining up so I could have a continuous gutter around the corner I would get back into edit footprint and I would go back to align eaves and I'm just going to adjust the height like we explained before one of those roof lines is in the right height there's the one that you want to align it to it's just you can check that out here that the, the uh, offset in the Z direction has changed the same and then we click the tick and there's your roof shape so the other option for truncating the corner if we want to do something different on this corner through here edit in the footprint is I'll just truncate the corner the same I'll even try and line it up with the kind of across here just create a bit of a construction line and I'll truncate this one exactly the same 45 degrees and we'll trim that off but the difference with this one is get, getting rid of that line the difference with this one is I'll leave this line so it hasn't got an angle symbol on it so it's not going to define any slope to the roof so the roof will just be picking its slope up from this line and there is a slope mark there is an angle line on this one here so this one is defining a slope also so the difference between this side this side defines a slope this side's not so if we click the tick from there you can see I've got that effect on the roof at that point and that's because that line that I created here doesn't define any sloping direction the sloping direction just gets defined from this edge sloping up and away and this edge sloping up and away all right so that's probably enough for that video I'll stop it at that point we'll come back and we'll do a little bit more editing once again